there's always two camps when it comes to driving down the road with your propane tanks on. We're gonna tell you about an experience we had with this guy right here that might give you something to think about. Ow, it's hot. If you're around for our video last week, you know that we had a problem with our stove falling out of its spot on a travel day while we're traveling down the road. The oven, the oven fell out. The oven didn't stay put. It's not good. So nobody wants your oven to fall out while you're driving down the road, but it did lead us to discover something that we hadn't even thought about before. Now you see it asked in the groups all the time whether or not you can drive down the road with your propane on. And typically it becomes a pretty polarized answer. Either you're gonna get somebody that says, I've been doing it for 15 years without any issue, or you're gonna get no. Now the reason why they wanna drive down the road with the propane on is to keep the food cold. They got a gas electric fridge, and this is what powers it. Now in a lot of the newer rigs, they have residential fridges with inverters and batteries, and so it's not a problem. But there's still a lot of us out there that have gas electric and need the propane, like us. Now, if you talk to the folks over at Dometic, they'll tell you that once the fridge reaches a cool point, it typically will last five hours. And I've seen people say that it could last up to 12 hours. When we first started RVing in our momentum, we would travel down the road with our propane on to power the fridge to keep the food cold. While being newbies, we started seeing reports in the groups about people's rigs catching on fire as they're driving down the road, and some of them specifically related to the fridges, and that changed the behavior for us. We figured at that point that we're only traveling a couple hours a day, and the fridge can hold its temperature, so we're gonna go ahead and shut the propane off and shut the fridge off on travel days. So trying to understand just how long our oven had been tipped over and hitting the island as we're going 65 miles per hour down the freeway, we started going through footage from inside the rig and that's when we ran into something rather disturbing. Okay, so like I already mentioned, we travel with our propane tanks closed, but yet there was still enough gas in the lines to light that burner for over 30 seconds. That's with both propane bottles turned off. So what happened without the screws through the cabinets holding that oven in place as we're driving down the road, the oven began to bounce and somehow end up turning the knob, releasing the gas, and then as it hit the island back and forth igniting, it ignited making the fireball. So we've had problems with our island bouncing around and hitting the oven even prior to going to the service center. But since being at the service center, they really secured down this island with some metal brackets. So it's pretty solid now. And looking back, we wonder how many times going down the road have we had flames back here and didn't even know about it. Now, the only reason why we stumbled on it this time is because the oven fell completely out and was rubbing against the island. And we started reviewing video to see exactly when it happened during our travel day. Okay, so we only had the problem because the, our oven did fall out of its location. But imagine for a moment if we would have left our propane tanks open and maybe the rig would have filled with more gas and causing a much bigger fireball. Or at minimum, when it ignited and the burner would have been lit for our entire five hour travel day. Yeah, the stove falling over is an unexpected accident, but it's exactly that, it's unexpected. What other accidents could happen with propane that would could cause a more extreme outcome? So for us, we've been in that camp at turning off our propane tanks for quite a while. And adding solar and batteries to our rig has made it a lot easier for us because now when we travel, we travel with our fridge on, but on electric. But this incident has added another item to our travel checklist. Now, instead of just turning off the propane, we come in and bleed the line so there's no propane left, just as a safety precaution. So what camp are you in? Do you travel with your propane tanks on or do you travel with them off? And if you do travel with them off, have you ever bled your lines before travel day? We'll see you next time.